Hello and welcome to today's video all about identifying your lawn problems. Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today's video is all about identifying your lawn problems. Now, whenever you have a nice lawn, you don't have many problems, so therefore you don't go looking for them. But when you have a, a lawn, we generally have a problem as well. Uh, and one of the first things to do is try and identify what the problem is, because that's gonna help us uh, move the lawn forward. Now, just a quick one. We're on the lawn that we did um, with our little domestic scarifer. We started this about four weeks ago, uh, as you remember. And uh, not much has happened since then. The weather's been cold, it's been wet. Uh, it's been very windy. Half of that tree has ended up on this lawn at some point in the last four weeks. But apart from that, we've done nothing else to it. It's been very cold. The soils have been very cold and wet. So grass growth hasn't done much, but as you can see, we've got a bit of a color coming on. And uh, essentially we're still waiting for nature to kick in and do its bit. We don't need to do anything else to this. That's the beauty of it. Um, Thatch levels are good. We've still got a few little dead patches, but once this grass starts to grow with the temperature increase, it'll be easy. Nature does the work for us. We're, we're just bit part players when you think about it. Now, this lawn, as I say, um, apart from having a bit of tree damage uh, as such, is in good shape and uh, going really well. However, you come over here, what happened over here I would say that my wife got involved. So if I pan around here, you can see a lovely bit of lawn, or what used to be lawn, uh, that got excavated for a new car park area. And also during some of the wet spell, uh, we were planning on just filling a hole down here, the where the tree had come out many years ago. Um, unfortunately, the excavator uh, ended up making a bit more mess and then it got too wet. Um, so now we've got a complete aberration on here. It looks absolutely dreadful. Um, good, good plus side is that the soil was beautiful. There's no problems with that. We've got some uh, big bits of rock in there because there were obviously bits of wall here in the past. Um, but one thing that we are going to do is shoot a different video on how to rake. Now, look, we would assume we all know how to rake and, and to a point we do. But I, I did have the good fortune during my time at the, um, the Oxfordshire Golf Club was learning from two, I suppose, very strange guys who, who actually raked the Queen's tennis court uh, when they were put in. They were probably the best two rakers uh, that I've ever seen in my life. Um, and the strange little technique they have, which I don't think I've ever seen anybody do except myself, is, is really useful in preparing uh, a seabed or a turf bed, for example. Um, and it's a, it will help you enormously. So uh, anyway, when it comes to identifying your lawn problems, first of all, we've got to go and look at a poor lawn because as I said earlier, if we've got a beautiful lawn, we're not gonna find too much of a problem. So let's go and look at a really bad lawn and discuss some of the things that we're gonna look for. Now, we're very much on what I call a problem lawn. Uh, fairly new, been designed by a garden designer. Um, I've spoken quite openly about garden designers don't make necessarily great uh, lawn constructors uh, and a lot of landscapers don't either. Uh, and that, and there's a prime example in this garden here. What we do, uh, again, so if we, if we look at the lawn first off, we've got what's called a dwarf ryegrass lawn. Uh, but it's a dwarf ryegrass lawn that's not manicured it's not looked after by an enthusiast it's purely and simply just here to serve a purpose and what you can see with some of the damage in here it's incredibly thin uh, it's growing vertically very very well uh, you can see the height on this is is two or three four inches in places but there's no density to the plant if you come down in here you can see huge amounts of gaps and this comes down to the fact that ryegrass is one seed one plant so constantly if you want to make this a nice lawn you've got to be obsessed with it you've got to be overseeing in it 
once, twice a year, at, at the very minimum, just to keep the plant density. Now that's a lot of work and it's not something that everybody wants to do. And in this case, we certainly don't want to do that. And what we can see are some of the problems. Now, when it comes to constructing a lawn, and this was constructed, this is a fairly nice, uh, pretty garden, uh, needs a bit of work at the moment. But one of the characteristics that we will show you is that landscapers also use, sometimes use different soils or certainly prepare soils in their flower beds, completely different to this. And, and obviously to a point, we are able to maintain them very differently as well. So when you have a bed like this, uh, during the winter, it, it goes quite dormant. Obviously we don't have much growing apart from the shrubs, but you're able to add mulch and bark and compost and things that are really gonna improve the soil. Over here, we tend to do nothing. Um, if we do do something, um, again, if you're obsessed with your lawn, it's great. You can be out there doing as many different techniques as you wish. But in general, people don't necessarily want to do that work. They want a little lawn to look after itself. Now, what I'm gonna just look at um, first off is some of the problems without looking at the soil, some of the problems that the designer or landscaper has created here. Um, now we've got timber edging all the way down here, we've got concrete over here, we've got timber edging down here, and as you can see we've also got an incredibly soggy area here surrounded by concrete and paving slabs. And what you can see at the moment <coughs> on this particular lawn that as we get over to this corner it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons why you don't get a lot of people showing off their ryegrass lawns in the winter because they can look like that. They can look a bit better if you're, if you're a bit of an enthusiast, but generally speaking, they'll die off uh, during that winter period and thin out, just as they are now. So we've got weed grasses coming in, we've got bits of weed, but we've got huge amounts of bare areas. So first of all, when you think about um, a lawn like this, think about why is the grass dying? Because whatever you do, and, and, and all the lovely YouTubers and people that show you how to scarify and overseed, etc., etc., if you don't solve the problem that's causing it in the first place, that new lawn is just going to become like this yet again. So the first thing in here, and this is the first thing that I notice on many aspects of uh, lawns, is can water move off the garden? You know, can it actually move sideways? In this case, we're surrounded by timber and then concrete at either end. So we've contained our soil, which basically means that unless we've got a really good soil, water can only go through the soil profile. So when you look at this, when we look at the thinness, when we look at the dampness, we know that water during the winter period isn't getting away. We know that the grass species on here isn't particularly great uh, for a winter grass, even though it's a winter sports pits grass. So let's have a look at a little soil profile, uh, which will then show that the water is sitting on the surface uh, for far too long. The grass roots are sitting in really cold, wet um, soil for many, many months. And it's little wonder that plants die. So let's have a little look. So this is obviously um, you know, a, a tool that uh, professionals use and it's just a core sampler, that's all, it's nothing fancy. And um, all you do with this is, I would say hit stones. Even doing this, whether you do this with a core sampler or a spade or a small fork or whatever, this will give you a, quite a good indication um, without having to take anything out of the ground. Um, so, I'm gonna show you what one of the problems is. Now, although we've got a little bit of uh, stone in there, what we, and, and twig and goodness knows what else, um, one thing that we can find by testing our soil structure is that the clay content in this is as good as plasticine. 
So what that essentially is going to mean is that water infiltration during your winter period when it is wet is going to be incredibly poor. Um, and the, the other downside as well is that the grass species we have, uh, which are, we'll drop a couple of pictures in uh, of, of root mass underneath your lawn. So when you don't have a lot of uh, uh, grasses, you haven't got a lot of root mass, but if you've got the wrong type of grass as well, you won't have a lot of root mass either. Ryegrass is, is one plant, never will turn into two. Uh, most of our, nat or two, our two native species have much denser root development, which are able to absorb moisture a lot better and give us a, a much drier surface. So there you go, there's, there's one of our problems already showing and and that's really caused by the fact that water even if we'd slope this garden if your lawn is on a slope for example the water can't translocate sideways because we put barriers up now that might not seem like much of a problem but believe me it will be and this area here with the lawn actually slopes right down into this corner that is the wettest this actually holds water um, and exactly why it's a little bit thinner as well so that's the first reason that we need to think about. Now, when it comes to identifying a problem, it's always had good to have a template. So here, here is our awful bit of clay material. Now, the question I'd ask landscapers is, do you ever even test this for percolation rates? Um, we tend to think soil, soil. But sadly, um, you know, this is a growing medium. Um, it's one that customers can sometimes pay for and um, I'd have to ask a question as to whether any sort of test is done to these sort of soils. You know, just because it's brown and light in a bag when it's been in a dry shelter for many, many months doesn't mean it's going to be any good. So doing a percolation test is, is a really important thing. Even doing this sort of test as, um, with a bit of moisture in it will give you an indication. This is, this is showing you how that plant's going <laughs> to not enjoy growing in that. Now if I get that out of the way and then show you what we all really need to sort of try and aim for. Um, and, and as I said to you before, the perfect lawn is one that's botanically perfect. Um, that means that the soil is good. It means that it's digesting the thatch to a, to a degree as well. So scarification doesn't become a, a necessary problem. Drainage isn't necessarily a problem. Uh, using the, the fertilizers that you put down and getting more longevity out of it aren't necessarily a problem. So if we look at this lawn here, just to give you an indication, this is um, obviously the same day. And um, how about that for a comparison difference? At the end of the day, we tend to think of soils as something that we want to cover up and hide really, really quickly. Um, but what an expert will tell you, and I don't know how many there are in this country, but uh, this will tell you your first indication of is the plant going to enjoy growing in this? Because if you don't get this right at the beginning, you're going to end up with these sort of mistakes and this sort of material. And that becomes difficult. That becomes a lot more work. It becomes a hell of a task to get grass growing in there. Now, the other thing that we'll talk about now is the grass species. And uh, we'll go back over and, and have a look at some of the rye grass uh, content. This is, this is what we call bent grass. Um, this is natural. I haven't overseeded this lawn ever. Um, haven't done anything to it at all. This is natural grass. Uh, it's creeping sideways. It's, it's growing incredibly well with root development because it's growing in a fantastic medium. And, and that's the perfect lawn is start the soil right and then you'll probably make your life a lot easier. So, just a quick one, apologies if you can hear some noise in the background, but um, as, as most of us suffered with the storms the other day, uh, we've had quite a bit of damage around here. So uh, roofers are everywhere. Um, you can never find one when you want one, but um, when you don't want them, they're everywhere. Um, so anyway, going back to this lawn here, um, this, is, uh, this is what is constructed in a lot of places these days, especially new builds. And uh, as I say, We'll talk about techniques to improve these soils uh, another day when we actually talk physically about soils. 
But if we look at this lawn in particular, let's look at some of the problems we've got. Um, now, one of the things that you'll see is lots and lots of patches. This is a lawn used by dogs, so it's not, it's not a show lawn and never will be. Uh, so you can see lots of bit of nitrogen being released by the, the dog's urine. Uh, and you can see the benefit of ryegrass to many is that it grows incredibly quickly upwards. Now, what we don't have is any turf density because it simply won't give you that. Ryegrass grows vertically very quickly, is very green to a lot of people, but it's never going to give you plant density unless you overseed into it. And if you don't want that, this sort of constructed lawn and turf type is gonna give you a little bit of a problem. Now, not every lawn, of course, will be like this. Not every lawn is gonna be contained with uh, sides and concrete at each end. And, and, but in this case, the thinness of the grass is certainly exasperated by the species that we've used. Now, we'll do another video another day about how we can integrate other grasses into this, which is tricky because obviously the speed of the rye grass, it grows so vertically so quickly that it actually blocks out light from a lot of other seeds to be able to germinate in the first place. Now, if you look down here, we've got some, uh, some little moss issues again as well down here, um, simply caused by the fact that we're sitting very wet and the fact that moss cannot actually be killed. Uh, again, that's another thing that we'll talk about another day, but you do not have the ability to kill moss. You have the ability to kill the plant, but the spore is still surviving. So if anyone talks about their wonderful moss killer um, that's going to solve all your problems, don't believe it, it won't. The, the idea of uh, moss control, again, a bit like weed control, if you keep your density of plant up and the health of the plant and the health of the soil, they're the two biggest factors that will stop moss coming in because the spores will always be alive in your lawn, always. You might blacken the plant, but it's not going to kill it. It will eradicate it for a period of time. So although we may have shade and people would say there's a shade problem over here, we've also got moss down here and there's a lesser problem of shade down there. Um, again, we've got a little bit of moss coming in here, not a lot of shade here. So it shows that it's not always one thing. We've also got moss in the middle here as well. Uh, it's a combination of different things and obviously to get rid of moss is, is something that's got to be attacked on many, many different fronts. There's no one thing that's going to do it, even though we're sold the dream of that being available in a bag or a box or, or, or even a sprayer come to that. Without, without sort of going through every single detail on, the, on every single lawn that you might have, when you come to this perspective, don't think about the problems that you're seeing necessarily because you know to color this grass up more evenly is very easy you can do that incredibly easy it's not going to be your long-term solution there are no matter how many times you feed your lawn unless you correct the problem that's causing all your problems in the first place it's not going to work you're going to end up in the same position so in every single case look at the soil that the plants growing in first look at the plant that's growing in it too before you start embarking on a, a program of renovation because it, this will dry out without question this could be scarified without question this could be overseeded and top dressed without question really simple easy things that everybody shows you how to do but you've got to evaluate what's causing the problem in the first place in here we've got poor really really poor soils uh, some of it down to the way the garden designer and the landscaper constructed it some of it down to the grass species that we've got on here which not a lot of people perhaps know about but all of these factors will be relevant in how you take your lawn forward and if you don't get the basis right at the beginning you'll find that you're doing this fighting of uh, you know, trying to keep grass on your lawn for four or five months a year. And, and that's one of the reasons, as I said earlier, why you don't see a lot of ryegrass lawns necessarily during the winter time, because they look a little bit rubbish, if I'm honest. So thank you very much for watching the video. Again, do hit that like and subscribe and by all means comment. Every lawn is very different um, and you're the person that will be able to look at your lawn better than anybody else. There is no one template that will give you the answers it will be you so get out have a look at your lawn 
Um, and hopefully you can look forward to a better one uh, with the improvements you're going to make. So uh, on that note, uh, see you soon and uh, we'll see you at the next video.